the most important thing you can know. Every dollar you save goes into your pocket. So I'm going to focus quite a bit on that. And I'm also going to talk about some other things as well. But um, kind of my, my uh, headlines here, I'm going, to, I'm going to go over how you evaluate your business. You know, what are you looking at in terms of how you view success? Are you looking at your weekly settlement? Are you actually have, do you have a long-term plan and goals? Um, so I'm going to talk about that real quickly and, and you know, make sure we have the right idea and mindset on how we evaluate how we succeed. Uh, I'm going to help us understand what we can control in our business. I know there's a lot out there that we cannot control. You have your hours of service, you've got your ELDs, you've got certain freight lanes. There's a lot you can't control, but there are a few things you can, and that's what we have to focus on to improve our business. Uh, I am going to look at a head haul and back haul example. It's really going to be focused, and this will be in quite a bit of detail, it's going to focus on how we can maximize our revenue. Um, and then I'm going to talk about controlling costs quite a bit. So uh, first thing, as Todd said, last year was a complete anomaly. So I like to tell people, just get that out of your mind. That's, that's gone. It's over. Let's get back to the basics and figure out how we're going to succeed now. Um, last year, we were just running as fast as we could, get to that next load, and we were, we were printing money. That's not the case anymore. So um, we can't just go looking at that. We've got to look at costs. So most companies saw all-time high IC pay. Um, and I talk to drivers all the time. I'm at shows and different things all the time. And everyone had a banner year. Uh, people weren't leaving fleets. People weren't turning over. Things were just good. So, um, you know, we were all getting raises without even trying. And, and that's, again, that's over. So last year was just easy success, and, and that's gone again. So, so we're going to focus on moving past that. So because of last year, everybody's back to viewing success on a weekly basis. And that's just not a good way to do it. Uh, the reason it's not a good way is it doesn't factor in quite a few things. Uh, people do take advances. That doesn't factor in. Uh, fuel purchase timing. I'm sure you guys have all made that mistake at some point in your life where you put too much fuel in your tank and you get your paycheck and, whoa, I put $500 in my paycheck sitting in my fuel tank. So that's really cash flow management and, and uh, something that you have to factor in. It doesn't factor in when your trips fall and how those pay out. It doesn't factor in your time off. Uh, and, and it also doesn't factor in many other things. So we got to get past that, you know, I had a bad settlement and, you know, things aren't good. You have to look at it more long term. So we need a plan. And what is a plan? If you don't have one, you need to figure out how to get one. You got to get a budget, a profit plan. You have to have, you know, a very good idea on what your business is doing. And you, you need to have the numbers broken down weekly, monthly, and annually so that you can go back and look at what's happening. We have this plan. so. You know, you have to figure out what revenue do you need? What is your break even point? You know, how much revenue do I need every week or how many miles do I need every week to pay for not only my trucking costs, but my home costs as well? Because we're not out there to just pay for our truck. We're out here to make a living. So we have to understand that break even. We also have to know our cost per mile. If we don't know our cost per mile, we're just running in the dark. Um, and then it also tells us the most important thing, what is your fixed cost per day? Do you, do you know your fixed cost per day? Because if you don't, then you don't know how much money you're losing when you're taking a day off. So it's very important to just get a budget around and know all those things. So I really encourage you to, to figure that out if you haven't done it yet. If you don't know how to do it, find someone that can. Give us a call. We'll help you out. Whatever you got to do. But you need a plan this year. And then the next thing you need is you have to monitor your plan. Once you have a plan, once you have an idea of what you need to do to be successful, you have to look at those numbers and see what you're actually doing. So you know, I said I needed. 2,000 miles a week to break even and pay my trucking and home costs. Well, now let's look at the real numbers. Let's see what's actually happening. Is my, are my fuel costs higher than predicted? Uh, is my revenue lower? You know, what's going on with my business? So you really just need that, that monthly profit and loss statement to say, hey, here was my plan. Now I've got actual results. This is how we monitor things. This is how we can fix our business. So one thing I like to tell people, you know, you're, you're your own business. You have one truck, maybe a few trucks. You can change things overnight. You know, you got a big trucking company that has a thousand trucks. If they want to slow their truck down, they have to get a thousand trucks in the shop, lower, you know, change their governed speed and all that. You're an owner operator. If you need to slow down to get better fuel mileage, you can do it tomorrow. So you can you can adjust things in your business right away. And so that's why it's so important to have a plan and then look at your actual numbers. Because just running in the dark and going paycheck to paycheck. You're not actually looking at numbers and figuring out ways to improve your business. And that's what it's all about, is making more money and putting it in your pocket. So that's what we're here and going to do some examples on here in a second. Um, so believe it or not, there are only two things you can really control well. I know there's 
you know, very small, monotonous things you can control. But the two things you can really control are generating more revenue and cutting your costs. That's it. That's pretty much all you can do to make more money. And as Todd said, for every more dollar of revenue you generate, you have costs that you have to incur. But for costs, every dollar you cut, you get to keep. So I'll keep harping on that because it's so important. But those are the two things you can really control. So I'm going to go into a couple examples here and show you how this works. So revenue is a big one. And I hear a lot of people out there over and over and over again say, I won't run for less than $2 a mile or some arbitrary number like that. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, the reason it doesn't make any sense is because you have to focus on revenue per day. You don't choose loads based on cost per mile. You have to look at your revenue per day generated. It's like I said, revenue is one thing you can control. It's also the engine that drives your business. So you really need to be out there. If you're choosing loads on a load board, look at your revenue per day. Figure out what you can do to increase that and put the most money into your, into your account. That way you have it to cover your costs. So time is money, and like I said, fixed costs don't stop. So you might have a $2 a mile load, but it takes four days, and you could have done it in two. It doesn't do you any good. So I'll go over, I'm gonna go into some examples now and, and kind of show you how that works. So one thing, as I said, that's very important is to know your fixed costs. What does a day off cost you? What does it cost to sit there and refuse a load? What does it cost you to take a day off and you know, spend time with your family? So, the average fixed cost for our clients is somewhere between $120 and $130 per day. And so there's a list up here, and you can see it and, and kind of look through it. But you know, you've got your truck payments, you've got your escrow accounts, you've got insurances, plates, you know, all those things. So for all intents and purposes, in my next example, I'm going to say $125 a day is our fixed cost, just to kind of show you the numbers and, and how you need to think about it. So. You know, turning down loads, like I said, is, it, it can be really, really, really bad proposition. You know, um, instead of saying, you know, I won't run for less than $2 a mile, you should be saying, well, I know my break even is 75 cents per mile plus my fixed costs. And that's what you need to be focusing on what you're running under. So that's what you need to cover, not a certain amount per mile. You need to have a revenue per day and you need to know, know your costs and what you need to cover when you're out there looking for freight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a really detailed example of a head haul back haul lane. And any of you that aren't familiar, a head haul is generally from a very high volume area on a dedicated lane um, that pays really well. A back haul is something where you're in, for example, I'm in Colorado. Any of you that have ever been to Colorado, you know that there's nothing coming out of there. I mean, it is tough. So that's a back haul lane. That's where you get the first load you can and you get the heck out of there. You get back to that head haul lane where you can make more money. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a typical example here. Ohio, New Jersey, it's a really easy one because it's 500 miles, really easy math. So I wanted to you know, make it easy for myself. But um, Ohio to New Jersey. So we're going to have a load that pays $2 per mile, 500 miles. Simple math, we got $1,000 revenue on that trip. Okay. The cost of this trip. We got $125 in fixed costs. 500 miles, hopefully we can get that done in a day, assuming nothing goes wrong. Uh, mileage costs, I'm gonna say 75 cents per mile. So we've got 125 in fixed costs, 375 in variable costs. For our, for our trip, we had $500 in costs to run that freight. So we had the $1,000 in revenue. We had our $500 in costs. We had a $500 profit. That's an awesome one day profit. I would love to make $500 every day. We'd be all be looking real good out here. So that, that's a really good opportunity. But then, as you know, you get to New Jersey, it's tough to get out of there. There's not good high paying freight, so what do you have to do? You got $1.25 per mile, 500 miles, so it's way less revenue to get out of there. You got 625 revenue, you still have your same costs. Same lane, same distance, same everything, so you still have $500. So trip total cost, again, $500. And so for this scenario, we had 625 in revenue, 500 in costs, only $125 in profit to get back out of there. Very low day, comparative to our day in. So overall, though, when you look at the full picture for the whole run, what we have is we have 1,625 revenue, 1,000 in costs. We had $625 profit, so about $312 daily. That's actually pretty good overall. It's a good balance. So you know that's a good two-day trip. And if you do that three times in one week, you're net up $1,800 in six days. So again, assuming everything goes well and 
pretty perfectly. We know that's not how it works, but still just good to look at the numbers and see what you can make if, if you're just getting, in all the, getting out of there and keeping your wheels moving, okay? So, but based on the previous example, it is easy to see why we would want to turn down that backhaul lane, right? You got the $500 profit on your first day, who the heck wants to run for $125 the next day? I mean, so it's easy to see why we might turn that down. But I'm going to show you why that's so important that you do not turn down freight and you do not sit there. So, you know, it's all based on supply and demand, and you have to know that. You have to get back to that head haul lane. You got to stay in those hot markets. You got to get back there as quick as you can. You do have those fixed costs, they don't stop. And again, what you need to focus on in running your business is obtaining that highest revenue per day because that's how you're going to make the most money. So, Real quick here, same, same lane, same first run. We're going to do the $1,000 revenue. We're going to have our $500 cost that first day, and we got the $500 profit. The same thing. This time, we're in New Jersey, and we, we got that hot head, and we say, you know what? I'm not going to run $1.25. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit, and I'm going to wait. So in this example, we're going to sit a day, and we're going to get $1.50 the next day. That sounds better, right? So in this scenario, same thing. $1.50 a mile back though, instead of $1.25, our revenue went from $6.25 to $7.50. However, what we didn't factor in is we have an extra day of fixed costs. So we got $125 more in revenue. Well, guess what? We have $125 more in costs. So all in all, when we look at the overall scenario here, we had $7.50 revenue, higher revenue. We had $6.25 costs, so our costs are up. We have the same profit, $125, because we sat there and we had those fixed costs still coming out. Okay? So here we are, the whole trip scenario with the day sitting. We had $1,750 revenue, $1,125 costs, $625 profit. Same profit, but we have an extra day of time in there. So our daily average, instead of it being $312, is now $208 per day that we netted to ourselves. So we lost money by sitting there all in all, because of our fixed costs. So not only that, but we have an extra day left. So here's a really good scenario, um, and, and here's kind of wraps it up. Our daily profit went down quite a bit in this, in this venture, but the thing we have to assume is, let's say we did take that $1.25, and we did get that same profit. Now we have a third day. Now we're back in that head haul lane. So instead of sitting that day in the middle and getting back to that head haul lane, now we're going to look at it. We had a three-day trip where we wasted a day sitting there. We made that $625 profit, $208 daily average. If we, got, if we took that first load, now we're back in Ohio, and on our third day this time, we can take another $2 per mile load and get back to New Jersey. So instead of having that wasted day, now our third day, we're back in that head haul lane. We're making another $1,000. Our costs are going to go up a little bit because we do have to run that third day, but we're going to have a $1,125 profit in three days versus the $625 because we didn't sit there and waste a day. So that's why we have to really look at revenue per day. You have to average it out. You have to look long term because if you sit there for a day, you've wasted a day of fixed costs instead of getting back to that head haul lane and having that extra day to run that high price freight that you really want to be, you know, really want to be in and making yourself money. So, you know. That's the kicker is you got to get back out of those lanes as fast as you can and get back into the high price freight. And, and uh, it doesn't always work that way. It's not always perfect. That's why you have to do the math. You have to you know, really sit there and think, what am I going to do to generate the highest revenue per day for my business? Because that's what's going to make me the most money. So don't cherry prick. Don't cherry pick. Think about revenue per day. Think about how it's going to impact your business. And so. That's, how, that's the best way to think about revenue. Like I said, that's the first thing you can control is your revenue, and that's the way to do it. Think about revenue per day. Think about how it's going to manage your business. The other thing you can do is you can control your costs. So simple as that. Fuel is your biggest cost. I'm going to go into an example here in a second. Um, as Todd had mentioned, last year we were just out there guns blazing, running as fast as we could, getting to that next high-priced load. Um, we've got to get back to those, you know, those dark times of $5 fuel and think about it that way again. What, is, what can we do to save money? And fuel is going to be your, your biggest cost savings. So maintenance, um, in the past when things get tough, people put off their preventative maintenance. You know, they're, not, they're not doing everything they can, and that leads to deferred maintenance and increased costs down the road. So you've got to keep up with that. Um, you know, read about it. Read about blogs. Read about what's going on. Everybody you know, does their 100,000 mile PM, and, 
and all that, but there's other stuff you have to do, so stay ahead of it. Educate yourself on what you need to do to, to you know, really stay ahead of the maintenance game. Taxation, that's what we do at ATBS, and that is a big one. With the new tax laws, everything's changed. Um, you know, company drivers had their per diem cut last year. That was a huge impact and you know, really changed how they had to think. You guys have different depreciation schedules, different uh, taxation brackets, you know, different things that, that have changed everything. So you really have to focus and make sure you're getting the most out of your taxation and have someone that's really on your side that knows trucking because it has changed a lot and it's going to continue to change and the schedules change every year. So you know, you got to stay on top of that and make sure you're getting all the deductions that you really can. Um, and I'll go into that here in a second as well. So fuel cost is interesting. And like I said, people kind of forgot about it last year. As Todd showed you, fuel mileage actually went down. And I know that's not because of the technology. The technology is there to get wonderful fuel mileage. Um, Henry Albert, who's a team run smart pro, he, uh, he actually gets 10 miles per gallon running 70 miles per hour. So, you know, it's possible to get really good fuel mileage. And that's something we need to get back to focusing on. Because as I said, and I say it again, um, a dollar saved is a dollar in your pocket. So here's an example, six miles per gallon. Todd said the average owner operator is running about 100,000 miles right now. Um, that's about 16,666 gallons of fuel. At $3 fuel, which I believe is about the national average right now, you're talking about $50,000 in fuel this year on 100,000 miles run at six miles per gallon. We bumped that to seven miles per gallon, which, you know, generally if you have better habits, slow it down a little bit if you've got time on the load, you can, you can get seven pretty easily in, in these modern trucks. Uh, seven miles per gallon, you're down 2,000, 500 gallons of fuel over the year. At $3 fuel, you went from 50,000 to 42,800. So you've saved over $7,000. And that money went right into your pocket just by getting one mile per gallon better. So it's so important that you monitor that right now because it is money going directly to you. And then I'll do another example, same thing, six miles per gallon, uh, $50,000 in fuel. This time, let's say we get eight miles per gallon. We really focus on it. We went down to 37,500 in fuel. We've saved $12,500 in fuel costs. And that goes directly on your net income. That goes directly to your family. Goes directly towards your new boat, whatever you want. That's free money. You, so if you think about it, you've got to go out there and get that free money, OK? So taxation, um, I put it here at the bottom. Get somebody that really knows trucking. Uh, it really does help you. You know, I, uh, we, we have people every year that come to us and show us their tax return and they went to an H&R block or something like that and they didn't even in include the per diem deduction. Um, as you know, that's a huge one. So uh, are you getting the most out of it? Per diem is $66 a day. Every day you're away from home, that's $66 you get to write off on your taxes. Um, so make sure you're keeping track of your days. Uh, get a calendar and mark every day you're on the road. Uh, I know there's apps out there that do it. So just make sure you're keeping track of when you're out on the road because it's $66 every day you're out there. Um, depreciation and lease payments. Make sure you've you're, you got a good schedule for that. Um, there's a new, new schedule and last year they said you can depreciate 100% of your new asset if you buy a new truck. Uh, that's not always the best way to do it, but if you have somebody that knows trucking, they're going to look at both ways, 100% depreciation, and a generalized schedule, and they're going to do what's best for you. Uh, cell phone, that's your number one business tool now. You need that to su succeed. You need that to run your business. You can deduct your cell phone. Um, showers, laundry, I mean, what I always tell people is, you know, are you out on the road when you're out there? When you spend money, ask yourself the question, is the reason I'm spending money right now for my trucking business? If the answer is 50% yes, you want to get that receipt and you want to give it to your tax preparer because you should be able to write that off on your business. Paper towels, you know, anything that you're doing for your truck, you want to make sure you get that receipt because you can write it off for your business. And then travel. You're here. You're at the truck show. Did you have costs to get here? Do you have hotel costs? You know, food. Everything you're doing here at this truck show is a business expense. You're here for education. You're here to, to get yourself a better business and more net income. So any costs you have at this show, you know, the $12 cheeseburger, you can write that off. That's an expensive cheeseburger. I want to make sure I write that off too. So make sure you're writing that stuff off and, and saving all your receipts for everything you do for your business. So um, just to sum it up, you know, like I said, you really need to evaluate how you, you, you view success. You need to have a budget. You need to have a P&L. You really have to look at the numbers. You can't just look at a week-to-week, 
Um, you know, you really have to you know, know your business. You're going to have ups and downs, but you need an average and you need to you know, have a long-term plan so you can make adjustments to make yourself more money. You need to understand what you can control. As I said, revenue and costs are it. You've got to maximize your revenue per day and you have to cut your costs. That's how you make the most money, plain and simple. Um, we did look at that head haul and backhaul example. You know, the bottom line is get out of that backhaul slow lane and get back to where things are good. You've got to control those, those uh, fixed costs per day and get in high revenues where you can do it. And then control your costs. You know, watch fuel this year. It's so important. It's, it's uh, $3. I know it's not $5 like it was, but it's still a huge cost. And as I showed you, just a couple miles per gallon can save you $12,000 or more dollars a year. So focus on those things, and that's what you're going to do to have the most success and put money in your pocket. It's back to the basics this year. So keep it that way. Evaluate your numbers and do the best you can.